Today, I'm thrilled to introduce to you a game changer in the world of Anchor Watch, the Smart Anchor integration for Home Assistant, which I developed. If you've been relying on traditional Anchor Watch apps, you might have faced issues like losing GPS signals, receiving false alarms, and endless problems with using multiple phones, which have security features that make it difficult to keep an active connection. I've been there too, and it's quite frustrating. However, integrating Anchor Watch functionality directly into our smart boat system changes everything. We can monitor our anchored position both onboard or remotely using any number of devices like phones and tablets. On board, we can also connect it to our inboard siren to warn us if when we are sleeping or relaxing, and even connect it to our ship's horn to warn us if we are on the beach without any devices or internet connection. We will use our ship's high quality GPS and antenna to determine our position. Our smart boat system is already running 24 by 7, so we'll have no connection issues. I've been using this method of anchor watch in Home Assistant for almost a year now and have never had a false alarm. Even when my boat was on a swing mooring for months during a harsh European winter, it performed flawlessly. The only times I had alarms was when I forgot to deactivate it before sailing away. When setting up the Smart Anchor integration, we specify the distance from the bow to our GPS antenna. This allows the system to use the bow position to mark our anchor location accurately. Using Smart Anchor is really easy. The big button labeled Drop Anchor. I usually have my phone ready with Anchor Watch open. Pressing this button marks our anchor location and sets up an anchor circle zone using a default size we've configured previously. We can also easily readjust the anchor zone radius or move the anchor position if needed. If you have voice assistant enabled, you can also mark the anchor position using verbal commands. Before we sail away, we just need to press the lift anchor button. I will demonstrate how to install Smart Anchor and also show you how to use it in more detail. So let's get started. So here we are in Home Assistant. Now the first thing we have to do is to install my Smart Anchor Watch integration. And to install it, we need to use Hacks, the Home Assistant Community Store. If you haven't installed Hacks, here's a video that shows you how to quickly install it. So once you have it installed, we go to Hacks, and then Integrations, and the top right hand corner, the three dots, and then Custom Repositories. Now the repository name, we have to uh, find, now I have it on my website, so if you go to my website, smartboneinnovations.com, you go to the code tab and scroll down to the very end to get to Anchor Watch. You'll have here the Smart Anchor Watch and here's the, the Hacks custom repository URL. So let's, the easiest is if you just click on it and then go to the URL bar and copy the whole URL and then go back, paste it into here, and the category is integration, and then add. So it's added it up on the list here. We just click on that one to install, So then we click on download. Okay, that downloads very quickly. So when we download it, you can actually check if it's here, just type in anchor, and says it's pending restart. So we always need to do a restart after we install a new Hacks integration. So I go to Developer Tools, Restart. Okay, I'll speed this up because it takes about a minute. So now Home Assistant's restarted. We need to go to Devices and Services, Add Integration. Let's search for the integration. I'll just type in Anchor to search for it. And here we have Smart Bird Anchor. Now, to configure this, this is where we have to provide the sensors we have for our GPS. Now, this is assuming that you have NMEA connected via one of my integrations, either the 0183 or the 2000 integrations. So, the first field is, is the entity 
which gives you the latitude. So you click on that and you get a drop down list of all the possible ones. I'll shorten it, just put latitude, and I'm going to use latitude decimal conversion. My anime comes from 0183, and that normally comes as just degrees and minutes. So I have part of the integration, and it, it also creates a decimal conversion. If you have the, the 2000 integration, then you'll have one directly, which is in a decimal format. But to use this integration, both your latitude and longitude both have to be in decimal uh, geolocation format. So we select that one, and then same for the longitude. Click on the longitude. Now we put in the default radius. So when we press drop anchor, this will be the default radius it will create the anchor zone at. So uh, let's make it a little bit less. Let's make it 40 meters. Now the heading sensor is the compass sensor you have on board so we can find out where the bow is and this is the one i'm using is heading degrees magnetic and then you need to put in a distance measurement from the, your gps antenna to the bow i'll put 13 meters for mine so they're all the fields so just to recap so we need to provide the entities for latitude and longitude the radius that we want the default radius to be and also the entity for where compass magnetic direction comes from, the heading, and also the distance from the bow to the GPS antenna. Then we press submit. So the integration will now use these sensors to derive the location for our anchor zone. Now what it's done, it's, it's created a few services. I'll show you these services. If we go to developer tools, services, I've created a few services called drop anchor, lift anchor, mark max, radius and update anchor zone. Now to make it easier, instead of just leaving you with these services, I put together a demo dashboard that you can use which makes use of these services. First we need to create a dashboard. Let's go to dashboards, add a dashboard, anchor watch, anchor and create. If we go to the anchor watch it's empty. Now if you go to the edit dashboard, three dots in the top right hand corner, and then select raw configuration editor. Now, if you go back to my website, this is where I'll have some a sample dashboard for you. If you scroll down, so we had the hacks. Here's a little coffee donation. If you'd like to give me a donation, I spend thousands of hours doing these integrations. So a few donations would be nice. Now, if you click on the first one, the download dashboard, YAML. This will download a file, which is the YAML for an example dashboard you can use. Let's go back to our configuration. Let's override what's here and paste it in and then save. And then click X to exit and then done to save the, the dashboard. So here we have the, the dashboard for the Anchor Watch. Now the best way to demonstrate how this works is to I'll go through a practical example of me going to Anchor. So here you can see the boat, it's called SBs, which is the boat tracker. Um, I'll show you how to change this icon at the end of the video. And this is, the, this is our track coming in. So we're not anchored at the moment, so the buttons are conditional. So when you're not anchored, you can only see the buttons which are, you can use in this state. So we can only drop an anchor. And this is the radius we're going to drop the anchor at 40 meters which is the default we set up when we set up the configuration you can change this you can change this before you drop anchor to 50 or 60 or whatever number you want um, but for this example i'll just leave it as 40. so if we want to, we want it ready to drop the anchor we'll just click drop anchor we'll press it on our phone and it will create a zone around the the anchor or the the position we marked of 40 meters and normally we'll just let the boat fall back with the wind a little bit and then we can reverse i'll just speed this bit up because i like to let the boat fall back on its own power under the wind and then i put into reverse okay so you can see that the the boats will have hit the end of the anchor chain just by the wind now then I'll go into a bit of a reverse just to pull the, the chain tight. And we can actually then set the max radius to when the chain is tight. 
so we can see so it's actually 35 meters to the anchor we'll just add a few more meters make it 38 meters so we don't get any false alarms or you can just be safe and just leave it at 40 or 45 meters and then you only get uh, a notification when it's really left the anchor zone you can change the size of the zone just by putting a, another number in here say we change it to 50 let's change it back to 38 You can also edit the zone. There's an edit zone button. This takes you to the Home Assistant zone page. Um, so here you have two things. You have my boat, which is the, the home for the Home Assistant and the anchor zone, which the integration creates. So you can just drag and drop here. You can move the zone around. So let's move the zone closer to the boat. So the anchor position is closer to the boat. And you can see it's reflected on the other screen as well. The anchors move much closer to the to the boat you can also edit the uh edit the zone by this or maybe not edit but you can see the latitude longitude of where the, the anchor has been dropped and the radius is the same radius here so basically it's creating a just a normal home assistant zone so when we're ready to leave the anchor position we just click the lift anchor button the confirmation in case we press it accidentally it removes the anchor zone and the automation won't fire that the boats left the anchor zone either. So we now need to set up an automation that will alert us when the boat leaves the anchor zone. I've set up a standard automation which you can download from my website. So if you go to my website, again the same page, the Smart Anchor Watch YAML page. And then the second button is Download Automation YAML. I'll download a file, just open that file and then select everything that's in it. And we go back, and we go to automations, create an automation, create a new automation, top right hand corner, three dots, edit in YAML, just override everything we have in here and paste in what I gave, and save. Keep the same name if you or change it if you like, up to you. Then go back. So let's have a look what's in here. Basic, it's a very basic automation. Is when the smart boat leaves the anchor zone is the trigger, and then I've only put one action, um, which which will send a notification to all your devices that have the Home Assistant Companion app installed. You can have others. I have a WhatsApp action on mine, and also have one that starts my indoor siren. Oh, and as a final, let's, uh, if you want to change the icon on the map page, instead of having SB, you can add your own icon. To do that, if you go to people, add a person, what we like, just say boat. Um, and here you can upload a picture. I have this one, but you can put any picture you like. You can put a nice little graphic of your own boat, or your boat's name. And I have the basic one here. Save it. The person doesn't need to log in. And then we just have to click a device to track. So we're going to track the smart boat. Create. So then we go back to the, the dashboard. Um, we need to edit. edit the map card. And instead of smart boat, we put in boat, the one we just created. Save. And done. And there you go, you have a nice new icon. The previous track is not there anymore because it's a, a tracking a new entity that it will appear. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.